what's going on everybody this is island hopper tv and today we're coming to you from cusco peru we're going to do a full travel guide let's do it coming to you from deep in the andes mountains here in south america we're at 11,000 feet elevation we're going to show you all around from machu picchu to the sacred valley here we are right now at the plaza mayor or plaza de armas this is a great place to hang out very colorful lots of activities going on down here this is considered the heart of the central historical area when the city's throwing a party, in this case, Carnival, this is where all of the action is going to be found, along with several churches and the main Cusco Cathedral right here. There's also several different museums nearby. We will be showing you around the central area here with some other attractions. So we'll go here and then we'll head out into the Andes and show you around Machu Picchu, but I just want to set the tone of what to expect in this video. But yes, this is the central historical area, Plaza Mayor, good place to start your trip. Here we are at the Curie Concha Museum. If you look right behind me, you can see the old Inca ruins in the museum. And then they got a garden and a grass lawn right there. Cori Concha here was the most important temple in the Incan Empire. It's located just about five minute walk away from Plaza Mayor. One of the things that really impresses scholars, historians, and architects is the way the Inca were able to take very large rocks and place them on top of each other with precision and no grout. For those of you who want to check out Spanish history, you can check out the churches here in Cusco, like the Cusco Cathedral. They also have the Iglesia de la Campana, San Blas Church, and much more. Now let's talk about the historical streets so there are many different historical streets that you can wander around Cusco that's why they call it the Rome of America by the way that rounded looking rock you see there that's one of the rocks they say they were able to use to move around these very large rocks to build the temples and the citadels here in the rock you can see they've got a puma and a serpent there's the head and there's the legs body that's how they know it's a male and then there's a snake this is the 12 angled stone and it's considered a national heritage site because it signifies the sophistication of the Inca's ingenuity. And here we are now at the San Pedro Mercado. This is a market that you can walk around and pick up some souvenirs and other foods. So let's go take a look. About a 10 minute walk away from the main square of Cusco. Here you'll find many different spices, drinks, types of food like corn, coca, you also find peppers, quinoa, kawichi, maca, so much variety here, and souvenirs. So it's a nice place to go if you're looking to do some shopping while in Cusco. It's really common here in Cusco for them to be selling corn on a stick, so that seems to be the number one street food. They also have a variety of different drinks. Some of them are medicinal and plants and leaves that you chew on that help you with high elevation. Some of you probably already know what I'm referencing. And I talked to some of the locals about why they would chew on a leaf like that, and they said that the high elevation is really difficult for most people but the leaf did help give them energy and stamina. Incan runners could go long distance with it. It's the first temple for the king and the builder, he said he wanted to put many flowers and where he put the flowers was in the rock. You can see right here, the flowers are built into the actual design. And they have them right here, all across here, many flowers. Is it a baby goat or baby yama? Baby sheep. Baby sheep. Baby sheep. Sheep, sheep. Up here on the mirror door, we have the baby goat, Anita, the sheep. She's uh, she's thirsty because she keeps licking the brass here on this. This is a nice lookout point for overlooking Cusco. Now here we are at Rainbow Mountain. This is one of the most famous things you'll do around Cusco. It has nothing to do with the Inca, but it's a very colorful mountain as you can see. It takes about three hours to get there. Many people say the hardest part is the actual hike. There are two different areas for Rainbow Mountain. All right, guys, so here we are now at Shakshay Woman, which means satisfied falcon. This is actually the tip or the head of the puma, which actually extends all the way down into Cusco. So very significant archeological site here in Cusco. As you're noticing, the Inca like to build animals into the temples, the rocks, and the world around them. You'll see other places around Cusco in the valleys where they resemble things like condors or pumas. And this impressive archeological site here called Saxe Woman 
was actually a Quechua word which sounds like something else in English, although it's not, so don't confuse it like everyone else does. But this was an impressive citadel temple right here on the mountain. They say it's the head of the Puma, like I said earlier. Entrance, and you can see this is like an inlay. He's saying this is a snake, but what they would have had was like a piece of lapis here and like some fine gems. So you would see like very beautiful, but now those rocks have been removed. I don't know where they went. And you can see right here at Taxi Holman how they have these rocks that are stacked on top of each other. There's no grout or anything in between. They're large rocks cut to precision. Even some of them have curvature to them, which is so impressive. A lot of people say this is the second best archaeological site in all of Peru, and it's right just above Cusco, maybe a 10 minute drive from the heart of the town. The elevation of this citadel sits at around 12,142 feet. It is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. In case you're wondering about that cougar and this being the head, the actual name for Cusco, according to Pachacuti, who was the Incan ruler, his father used to call Cusco the Lion City, so that's why he wanted to make it like a lion with the fortress being the head and the body you can see going down towards the river which resembles the tail. Along with getting beautiful views of the city of Cusco, you'll also find many different alpacas up here just walking around. They don't really like to be touched, but they will get close enough to you so you can take a picture. Also, if you guys are planning to visit Peru, I highly recommend you watch our other videos. We did everything you need to know when visiting Peru. That video, I'll put a link to that down below in the description and the comments. We also did a Machu Picchu full travel guide as well as a Lima travel guide. So if you're coming to Peru, I highly recommend you watch those videos. We'll put them below in the description and the comment. Also, one thing I wanted to let you know about the alpaca, it is something that you will find the shirts and the clothing have, and it is considered one of the finest fabrics in the world, especially the baby alpaca. More on that later, but now we're headed out to Machu Picchu and along the way you'll, you'll see these cliff capsules that sit along the sides of the these hills here very high up there the only way to get up there is to scale like a rock climber and you can stay at that hotel there now we're gonna take the train to Machu Picchu Pueblo which from Olean Tambo takes about two and a half to three hours each way you can either take Peru rail or Inca rail now here we are at Machu Picchu so from Machu Picchu Pueblo, or also known as Aguas Calientes, you take a bus up to Machu Picchu. At around 8,000 feet elevation, you'll find Machu Picchu here. Make sure you bring a lot of sunscreen because the sun is very bright up here on this beautiful hill. And you'll see everything that you imagined Machu Picchu to be. It is absolutely spectacular. Try to book your tickets in advance, and I would say circuit one, two, or three are considered the best. Admission without a guide, the bus, or the train ticket is 45 US dollars. Here we are now at the hands of the community. This is a sanctuary for llamas, you have alpacas, you have uh, guanacos, guanacos, you have pecunias, Condors, look at him. And the babies, they escape. Look at this little one. He escaped because he can't be kept in there. So sometimes you see the little babies. <laughs> and this is Alamachaco. Alamachaco. The name of this place is actually Manos de la Comunidad, and it is very nice to stop here. You're supporting the animal sanctuary that they have, and you'll get to learn a lot about all of the animals except for the pumas. I didn't see any pumas here but these are the animals that are here in the Andes along the Peruvian uh, highlands. This particular, this particular destination is about 30 minutes outside of the Cusco city center, and it's a good place to take the kids especially, but even if you're an adult like me, you can see the alpacas up close, you can feed them. They got so much character, these animals, it's really funny. Now, in case you're wondering what the difference is between baby alpaca and regular alpaca uh, fabric, so, the first cut for the alpaca is called baby alpaca. It doesn't necessarily mean that they kill the alpaca or that they cut the hair off of the alpaca where the baby's gonna freeze. It just means that it's the very first cut from the alpaca's hair. So that's what baby alpaca is because it's a little bit softer. It's just more sought after than the older alpaca's uh, fabric. And how do I know? Because our wonderful guide that you see here, she was telling me everything I needed to know. Hopefully you get her because she is amazing. 
And you can see the ladies here, they're actually weaving some of the alpaca clothing that they actually sell here on site. This is gonna be some fine fabrics. Uh, when you're in the Andes, it does get chilly, and what better than to have some of the locally handcrafted fabrics that come straight from the source. There is a difference between the synthetic and the real stuff, so make sure you're getting the real stuff if you want the highest quality. And here's just a look at some of the quality they have here. Now here we are at Tambo Mache, which is actually a Quechua word for place of rest. Here you'll find the Fountain of Youth. You'll see these fountains, very interesting. So Tampu Mache. This is about 35 to 40 minutes away from the center of Cusco. You can see it started to rain on us, so everyone was wearing one of these plastic uh, raincoats. Be sure to pick one up when you go out, especially during the rainy season, which goes from around November until March. Here we are now at Puka Pucara, which is the Red Fort. By the way, each one of these archeological sites have a cost of admission for the ticket. I highly recommend getting the uh, full Cusco tourist ticket if you plan to go from Cusco to the Saxe Woman and then into the Sacred Valley. That includes 16 different attractions and costs around 47 US dollars. There's really so much to learn about the Inca civilization. The more I went around, the more impressed I was. What I have coming up for you a little later on is going to be even more impressive sites that you've probably never even heard of like Moray or some of these other Incan ruins. My suggestion for Cusco is try to stay here around 72 hours. If you're going to do Machu Picchu and the Sacred Valley, you're probably going to need around five to seven days. Here we are at Kenka. This is an area where they would do sacrifice of a llama. And if they cut open the llama and pulled his heart out and it was healthy, that signified that it was going to be a good year. If they pulled the heart and they saw that it was black or white on either side and an unhealthy heart, it signified that it might not be a good year. What they would do with the llama after they were done sacrificing it here at the altar is they would take it to Saxe Umen, and then over there, the king would also pour the blood into the beer and then they would drink it. And everyone was happy because it was gonna be a good year. I asked what happens if it's not gonna be a good year and I didn't really get much of an answer, but I'd assume it probably wasn't a great experience for the locals at the time. But either way, as you're going through Cuenca here, you'll see they do have the altars and they say there was a variety of different sacrifices going on here. But the only one that I heard about was the llama, but I heard there was some more possibly. Uh, just depends on who you ask and who's your historian, but they like to stick to the story about this just being for llama sacrifice. And as you work your way down, that's when you'll start to see the actual uh, sacrificial table or the rock where they would do the sacrifices. There was more than one. And yeah, it's a bit eerie, but it's here in the cave. Just some background on this trip here. My dad actually came to join me from Arizona. It's been a lifelong dream of his to come see the Incan citadel of Machu Picchu, Saxe woman. He even wanted to go down to Bolivia to Puma Punco because he's a stonemason himself. So you could see for someone like him, this is pretty much the most incredible place that he could go aside from maybe the Egyptian pyramids or Angkor Wat. And even then, this was actually at the top of his bucket list. So if you're coming to Cusco and you can find Caesar right here, he's 84 years old. He's a local expert. Now let's talk about some of the local Peruvian cuisine, obviously starting with the golden lager beer from the Sacred Valley, but then you have la corn, which we talked about previously, maize, chicharron, they, they have trout ceviche up here, tamales, but there's more coming later in the video. Something interesting about this aqueduct right here, it's a river, and then right underneath here, it turns into a road, and you actually drive on that road, you would never know that there was an aqueduct or a river that comes down cascading from the mountains here. This was designed by the Inca. But now obviously it's taken on some of the modern characteristics thanks to the Spanish colonization and everything. But still, this is an ancient aqueduct that goes back to the Inca. Remember, the Inca were a very sophisticated ancient civilization primarily with rocks. The area we're at now is an overlook looking into the Valley of Cusco. People are started to move over here because you can actually get a nice home here with a garage for around 15,000 to 20,000 US dollars. 
you go over here, this is the old colonial area. And then as you pan to the left, over this way, you'll see this is the new area of the Valley of Cusco where people are living and farming. It's a good life out here. If you look right down here, you can see they've got potatoes, they've got beans, and maybe even some corn. Lots of varieties of potatoes grow out here in Peru. And on your way from the Cusco to the Sacred Valley, you can actually visit Cochawasi, which is an animal sanctuary where they have all types of animals that you might find here in Peru, like these condors. They've also got monkeys and so much more. Little cats, llamas, pacas. Cochawasi is a bit different than Manos, and I would recommend going to both, but I like this one here because the condor is amazing to see you actually go in the exhibit this is a huge bird just so you know they used to be around machu picchu but when they built the hydraulic power plant the helicopters actually scared off all of the condors and they haven't been able to reintroduce the condor to machu picchu so peru is home to cats like this which look like your average house cat which is interesting they also have the andean bear and they have the puma, although we didn't get to see the puma because he was sleeping, but here it is, the condor, or the flight of the condor. They actually have two here, one is a male and another female. Well, we have arrived at the Sacred Valley here. It actually extends from south of Pisac all the way up to Machu Picchu. And the reason they call it the Sacred Valley, not just because it's so beautiful as you can see, but it's because it's like a fertile valley that supplies wheat, beans, corn, carrots, all the vegetables everywhere in Peru, for Cusco, for Lima, Arequipa, it all comes right out of here. So major farming area, very fertile. So here we are now at the ancient Inca city of Pisac, way up here. And if you look right over here, we've got some rice terraces that just cascade down the mountain into the Sacred Valley. And this ancient city here is more of the same amazing rock work, fortress, citadel, sanctuary, up on the hill. It's always amazing to walk around these, especially when you see the stones that go over the actual walkways. Uh, one thing I will say, don't confuse Pisac Town with the old archaeological site of Pisac because they're two totally different areas. So you have to go up the mountain to get there. Also, I said those are rice terraces, which is really just a farming terrace where they would have farmed potatoes, uh, corn, or other types of crops, not necessarily rice. And now when we went down into Pisac, we actually stopped at one of the local gem stores. Uh, so my dad, as you've been told, he is big on rocks. That includes uh, lapis, chrysocolla, turquoise, uh, any type of rock, onyx. A lot of different rocks come from here and he wanted to stop and see what kind of jewelry they had. So this is one of those things to do is go shopping for some jewelry. She was using the Tesla ball here because you can actually tell what's a real rock and what's fake or plastic using the Tesla globe. Anytime you see the electrical current flow towards that actual rock, that means it's real. Here we are in Urubamba, which is along the Rio in the Sacred Valley. This restaurant here is called Don Angel, Angels, Don Angel. Uh, it's a restaurant, Inca Casona. So we're gonna see what kind of food they got. We're just really waiting for the rain to pass. It's really chilly, really cold. Uh, when it's not raining, it's, it's actually kind of humid. To be completely honest, this was probably the best restaurant I ate at in all of Peru. They had a big buffet, huge banquet hall, lots of food. This is the place to go if you want to try real authentic Peruvian food, including guinea pig or alpaca, side dishes. They had everything but ceviche here, plenty of corn, lots of soup. Papa soup is one of the most famous soups or foods you will find across Peru. That's soup with potato. And I did tell you a little earlier on that we were going to show you more of that Peruvian cuisine. Well, this is actually where you're going to get to see what the unique foods are that you'll find out in the Andes. 
This for me was actually my first time trying guinea pig. You're about to see my reaction. To be honest, I was trying to avoid eating that and alpaca. Yeah, this is my first time trying guinea pig here at uh, Urubamba in uh, the Sacred Valley. Wow. Got the really good flavor. I like it. Well, what it really tasted like was quite salty and crispy. I don't know if it's always gonna taste that way. I was worried that it was gonna be gamey, but it wasn't. Also, it was my dad's birthday, so they decided to do a Peruvian birthday celebration, Feliz Compleanos, and so he got put on the spot with that, and uh, that happened. Yeah, so here we are at the salt mines up here in Marces. This is really great. They got this pink Peruvian salt. We're gonna go down here and see what's going on. So I guess just as they have Himalayan rock salt, they also have Andean rock salt, but this one here is considered salt farming. So as the stream comes down, the water enters into one of these puddles or ponds, and then it eventually dries out and they redirect the water and then they just harvest that salt from there. Apples. Now we've arrived at Moray. This is actually an experimental laboratory for a variety of different crops. They would come here and try them out because of the microclimates that they can build on each terrace. Three regions of Peru. You have the coast, you have the Sierra, and then you have the jungle. So they could try out crops. All three of those different climate zones, they could try right here. Now, when we say it's a laboratory farm, that means the Incas used it as a laboratory farm. They no longer actually plant anything here, so far as I know. And there's a few of these different terraces around this area. The one that you're looking at right now just so happens to be the most photogenic and famous looking terrace area. These flowers here are called baby shoes. You can see they look like a baby's shoes. You can see they're building the new airport here in Cusco. It's about 55 minutes outside of town, but it's far from being done. Right now, the main airport is right in the city center of Cusco. Lots of congestion and farther away from Machu Picchu than this one. So if you're trying to go to Machu Picchu, the new airport will be a lot closer. And it's actually out here in Chinchero, which is actually a scenic area all in of itself, a very historical town. So Chinchero is about to be up and coming. Maybe it'll be as popular as Cusco. Uh, one day because it is quite historical as you can see this church and the historic roads Well, actually it will never be as famous as Cusco, but it will be more popular Anyways, that's going to conclude this episode of Island Hopper TV If you enjoyed it hit the like subscribe to this channel if you love it And we'll see you on the next one from Lima and as we talk about Machu Picchu